Ow! In 1985, with the release of The Return of the Living Dead, a patch came out that buffed zombies hard IRL. Zombies went from being cringe to being based, with one movie and one simple change. The destroy the brain thing has been completely embraced with basically everything zombie wise having this rule. And this rule is stupid, and I'll tell you why. The first ever zombie flick was an indie film called The Night of the Living Dead. Zombies originally started out as people brought back from the dead with a hunger for brains. They were slow as hell which made them fairly easy to avoid and not much of a threat. And what made them even less of a threat was they were really easy to kill with a simple headshot putting them out of check. But then, the clouds aligned and pooped out Dan O'Bannon, a mad lad who decided to switch up the zombie formula and make them incredibly hard to kill. I mean, how do you kill something that's already dead? These zombies took bullets and sharp objects like it was nothing. You could destroy the brain, or even completely remove its head, and that zombie would keep on chugging. Even individual limbs could still attack you. And that shit is scary. But no longer are they the menaces that this movie made them out to be. Now, they're back to going down with one shot or jab to the head. And that's dumb. Like big, smelly, poopy, stupid, dumb, stinky dumb. The premise of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Achilles is terrifying. The guy is practically invincible to your knowledge, until you know about his heel. And that's what they did to zombies. They gave them a universal Achilles heel that everyone knows about. It's hard to take shows like Tawuda seriously, because the main threat really isn't that much of a fucking threat. Dude, all the characters that died to zombies deserved it. If your favorite character died to a zombie in this show, I'm sorry, but they are clearly already brain dead, so I'm sure they'll fit right in with the zombies. Like at least werewolves, it's like, oh shit, we need to find a specific type of bullet, and werewolves are fast, but slow ass zombies can take any bullet or even just a pointy object to the head, and they're down for the count. Look, if you're gonna make them a one-shot kill, at least make them fast. 28 Days Later is a fantastic film that features zombies and wieners. This was the first zombie flick to decide that slow zombies were not gamer enough. So instead, they made them fast and really fucking aggressive. Not only that, but this virus spread really easily. If you get zombie blood in an open wound or even your eye, boom! Just like that, you're wanting brains for breakfast. But these zombies were also easier to kill with them not requiring a headshot, but just any wound that would kill a normal living person. Oh, and did I mention that these zombies also like to stick together? Aw, zombie family! This movie made a very unique take on the zombie formula, with them becoming easier to kill, but the virus itself becoming way more of a threat. Now I don't know why you would pick these zombies over these zombies, but let's say you like the slow, lame, one-hit zombies better. What if I told you we could compromise? Thanks to video games like Dying Light and Half-Life 2, where there are different types of zombies with some zombies being really easy to kill, and some, uh, not so much. Wow, Jaden, you managed to go an entire video about zombies without mentioning Resident Evil once. Good job, loser. I'm very impressed. Okay, first, no need for the sass. Second of all, when did I say it was done? Um, what? In the original Resident Evil, you know, from the 90s, you didn't really have control over your aim, you just sort of locked onto them and fired, and they would eat up your bullets as they slowly made their way towards you. And that shit was like, downtown Creepsville. Not only did it take a lot of ammo to kill the zombies, but the zombies had a little bit of a habit of... pretending to be dead when they actually weren't. After playing a little bit, you'll notice that, at least in the remake, they form a pool of blood if they're actually dead, but if they're not, there'll be no pool of blood, so you know when they're faking it and when they're not. But just when you thought you had these zombies figured out with that little tip I just gave you, surprise, some of those zombies don't actually stay dead unless you burn them alive. And if you didn't burn them alive, now they're incredibly fast. And if that wasn't stressful enough, you also had to deal with zombie dogs and scaly lizard zombie things? Not to mention giant snakes, spiders, sharks, and Lisa. 
This gameplay made you plan out the safest routes to preserve ammo and keep you safe in this absolute maze of a mansion. And it forced you to pick and choose which zombies you would spend your valuable fuel on to burn. Oh, and while figuring all that out, you were also solving really interesting puzzles. It may not look it, but this game can get pretty intense. But as times changed, this gameplay became old. People actually wanted to aim. So Capcom said, And this resulted in the release of Resident Evil 4, the first game in the series to drop the fixed camera angles for a more over-the-shoulder approach. And yes, you could actually aim. But they didn't make these zombies one-hit headshots. Instead, they made you think about the best plan of attack. With zombies that would die faster if you shot them in the head over the body, but there's a chance that these zombies' head would explode and a parasite would come out. And this parasite had hecka range and was super annoying to kill. Is it worth the risk to deal with this thing just to save a couple of bullets? Or do you even kill them at all? They are really slow, so you could run past them, and even if they're blocking your way, you can shoot them in the leg and they will fall down and then you can still run past them. And now you saved even more ammo but you might have to deal with them on the way back. These zombies were still slow, bullet spongy, and scary. I mean, the puzzles were kind of meh, and this is sort of the game that led to Resident Evil going all action-based, which was, uh, horrible. But I still can't deny that Resident Evil 4's gameplay was fantastic. Both of these made you actually think over this mindless shit. And Resident Evil 4's gameplay is still being used to this day with the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes, with the zombies still playing dead. These two video games are easily some of the best games to come out ever. Not to mention they have the most realistic zombies in video games right now. I cannot praise these games enough. But it's not just the Resident Evil series that drew from this gameplay. This gameplay can also be seen in video games like The Evil Within. This is a crazy fucking game where you get trapped in a genius psychopath's mind. It's got plenty of crazy monsters, and you guessed it, zombies. Zombies that you can blow a hole straight through their face and they will keep marching your way. Not only that, but they took the burning mechanic from Resident Evil 1 and amped it up to a thousand, making fire a zombie's biggest weakness, allowing you to bring zombies toward burnable objects, setting up a trap to save ammo which is a really interesting and fantastic mechanic that they didn't include in the sequel, because fuck me. What this video basically boils down to is fuck the Walking Dead, they suck, they killed my homie Glenn, and now I hate them for it, and I really hope that the new Resident Evil movie is actually good and not like this. Cool, thanks.